Okay, so this is a whopping great load of information. Um, so I'm trying to carry out an experiment to identify an unknown carbonate. It's really important to read this carefully. So I weigh a sample of the solid carbonate in a weighing bottle, tip the carbonate into a beaker, then re-weigh the weighing bottle. And that tells me exactly how much I've added into my beaker. Um, I then prepare a solution of the carbonate and carry out a titration. Um, and when I'm making up the solution of the carbonate, the carbonate is dissolved in about 100 centimetres cubed of distilled water in the beaker and transfer the solution into a volumetric flask and then make it up to 250. Another student suggests two possible sources of error. A small amount of the solid it remains in the weighing bottle and a small amount of the solution remains in the beaker. Does it matter? It doesn't matter that a bit of solid is left in the weighing bottle because I weighed the weighing bottle before and after. So I know exactly how much was added into the beaker. So I had before, I then tipped it in and I weighed it after as well. So the difference between those two readings will be exactly how much was added into the beaker. Does it matter that when I had my volumetric flask, I poured my beaker into the volumetric flask, some liquid was still in the beaker? Yes, it does. Because in that, that solution was still some of my carbonate that dissolved. I need to transfer all of that water, all that solution in the beaker into my flask. How do I do that? Well, I rinse around the beaker with some distilled water and then pour it in. Hope you remember doing that. You've got your beaker, you pour it into one of the flask, then rinse your beaker with distilled water, pour that in, rinse it again, pour that in, and you make sure that all of the carbonate has gone into the volumetric flask. Right, so they want me to read um, some uh, readings on the old burette. So what are my readings? Well, this is zero here. Remember, it goes in point 0.1. So that's point 0.5 and that's point 0.6. So that is 0 0.60. It's bang on that line. What about here? That's 22, the long line. 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that is 22.80. Remember, that final decimal place is either a 0 or a 5. And then the tighter is that minus that, which is going to be 22.20. Uh, describe what the student should do to obtain reliable results for the titration. Um, okay, well, you know what, what you do with titration. You keep doing a titration until you get two titers within point one of each other. Um, and then you take the average reading of your titers. So repeat until you get two titers within point one of each other and then take the average. Right, almost there. The equation below represents the reaction of carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Okay, calculate the amount of mole of M2CO3 using the titration. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the number of moles of HCl. So here we go. Moles of HCl uh, is going to be the titer, which we worked out to be 22.20, times the concentration, which we know is 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed, over a thousand, which comes to, I'm going to run out of space here, uh, 0.0022 moles. Um, moles of M2CO3, if you look at the equation for every two of those, I need one of those is going to be half of that. So moles of M2CO3 is that number divided by two, which is 0 0.0511. Okay, uh, mass reasons are recorded below. Uh, now work out what M is. Okay, so uh, let's start a fresh page, show your working. So, We've just worked out the moles of M2CO3 in 25 was 0. That, let's spell it in 25 centimetres cubed was 0. 0.0011. So moles in 250, which is the original volume, is going to be that times by 10. 
um, like so. Then the MR is the mass divided by the number of moles. The mass is that minus that, which is 1.58 grams, divided by 0 0.0111 gives you 142.3. Now, that gives you the mass of the whole M2CO3. I need to work out M. So, the way I do that is I take 142.3. I minus the uh, molar mass of the carbonate, which is 12 minus 3 times 16 for the oxygen. That gives me about 82. 82.3 maybe. I then, because it's 2m, have to divide that by 2 to give me... 41.15 and therefore if you look at your periodic table M is potassium. Um, just in case you're wondering why it can't be calcium, it's got to be group 1 hasn't it? Because it's M2, CO3. Remember CO3 is CO3 2 minus. If it was calcium carbonate it would just be MCO3 because calcium has got a charge of plus 2. So it's got to be group one for M. Right, okay, and then we finally get to use the ideal gas equation. Oh, hey, exciting times. Um, so I've got uh, alcohol containing carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, liquid at room temperature, easily vaporized, okay, that's all good. Determine the molar mass and draw a possible structure. So I need to find the number, well, you know, what have they given me? They give me a pressure, a temperature, a volume, and I've got R for my day sheet, so I can find N. So the pressure is going to be 100 times the volume, which is 761 times 10 to the minus 6, because remember I have to convert it into meters cubed, divided by R, which is 8.314 times by... 366 for your temperature and that gives me 0 0.0250 moles like so um right that mass produced that volume so that number of moles must come from that mass so the mr very similar to what we've just done is the mass divided by the moles which gives me 46. So what can it be? It's got carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in. Well, oxygen 16, so that gives me, take away 16 and down to 30. Couple of carbons is 24. So C2HIOH. Uh, and the structure is ethanol. Remember, if you don't get that bit, you know, it's a bit playing around with your numbers to calculate to take away an oxygen, take away a couple of carbons, and then if you're down to about five or six, you know you, the rest is just going to be hydrogen. So, you know, just play around your calculator. 46, it can't be that different, can it? You know, oxygen 16, carbon's 12, so most of it's going to be made up of that. Um, but, you know, most of your marks are coming from that anyway. So think about the data you're given and then just bang it into an equation that, um, you know, you don't, need, you don't need to know that many formulae in terms of equations for, for chemistry. Okay, good luck.